One of my earliest memories is of trying to wake up one of my relatives and not being able to. And I was just a little kid, so I didn't really understand why. But as I got older, I realized we had drug addiction in my family, including later cocaine addiction. And I've been thinking about it a lot lately, partly because it's now exactly a hundred years since drugs were first banned in the United States and Britain, and we then imposed that on the rest of the world. It's a century since we made this really fateful decision to take addicts and punish them and make them suffer because we believed that would deter them; it would give them an incentive to stop. Professor Alexander explained to me the idea of addiction we've all got in our heads. That story comes partly from a series of experiments that were done earlier in the 20th century. They're really simple experiments. You can do them tonight when you go home if you feel a little bit sadistic. You get a rat and you put it in a cage and you give it two water bottles. One is just water, and the other is water laced with either heroin or cocaine. If you do that, the rat will almost always prefer the drugged water and almost always kill itself quite quickly. So there you go, right? That's How we think it works. In the 70s, Professor Alexander comes along and he looks at this experiment and he notices something. He said, "Ah, we're putting the rat in an empty cage. It's got nothing to do except use these drugs. Let's try something a bit different." So Professor Alexander built a cage that he called Rat Park, which is basically heaven for rats. Right? They've got loads of cheese. They've got loads of coloured balls. They've got loads of tunnels. Crucially, they've got loads of friends. They can have loads of sex, and they've got both the water bottles. The normal water and the drugged water, but here's the fascinating thing: in Rat Park, they don't like the drugged water. They almost never use it. None of them ever use it compulsively. None of them ever overdose. You go from almost 100% overdose when they're isolated to 0% overdose when they have happy and connected lives. Professor Alexander began to think there might be a different story about addiction. He said, "What if addiction isn't about your chemical hooks?" What if addiction is about your cage? What if addiction is an adaptation to your environment? Looking at this, there was another professor called Peter Cohen in the Netherlands who said maybe we shouldn't even call it addiction. Maybe we should call it bonding. Human beings have a natural and innate need to bond, and when we're happy and healthy, we'll bond and connect with each other. But if you can't do that because you're traumatized or isolated or beaten down by life, You will bond with something that will give you some sense of relief. Now, that might be gambling, that might be pornography, that might be cocaine, that might be cannabis. But you will bond and connect with something because that's our nature. That's what we want as human beings. And I think, you know, at first I found this quite a difficult thing to get my head round. But one way that helped me to think about it is, and I can see, yeah, you know, I've got over by my seat there a bottle of water, right? I'm looking at lots of you, and lots of you have bottles of water with you, right? Forget drugs, forget the drug war. Totally legally, all of those bottles of water could be bottles of vodka, right? We could all be getting drunk. I might after this,、um, and, but we're not, right? Now, because you've been able to afford the approximately a gazillion pounds that it costs to get into a TED talk, I'm guessing you guys could afford to be drinking vodka for the next six months. You wouldn't end up homeless. You're not going to do that, and the reason you're not going to do that is not because anyone's stopping you. It's because you've got bonds and connections that you want to be present for. You've got work you love. You've got people you love. You've got healthy relationships. And a core part of addiction, I came to think, and I believe the evidence suggests, is about not being able to bear to be present in your life. You know, we live in a culture where people feel really increasingly vulnerable to all sorts of addictions, whether it's to their smartphones or to shopping or to eating. You know, before these talks began, you guys know this that、uh, we were told we weren't allowed to have our smartphones on. And I have to say, a lot of you looked an awful lot like addicts who were being told their dealer was going to be unavailable for the next couple of hours. And yeah, a lot of us feel like that. And it might sound weird to say, oh, you know. I've been talking about how disconnection is a major driver of addiction. But weird to say, it's growing because you think, well, we're the most connected society there's ever been, surely. But I increasingly began to think that the connection we have, the connections we have, we think we have, are like a kind of parody of human connection. If you have a crisis in your life, you'll notice something. It won't be your Twitter followers who come to sit with you. It won't be your Facebook friends who help you turn it round. It'll be your flesh and blood friends who you have deep and nuanced and textured face-to-face -face relationships with. And yet, Bruce Alexander, the guy who did the Rat Park experiment, says we talk all the time in addiction about individual recovery, and it's right to talk about that. But we need to talk much more about social recovery. Something's gone wrong with us, not just as individuals but as a group. And we created a society where, for a lot of us, life looks a whole lot more like that isolated cage, and a whole lot less like Rat Park. But if I'm honest. 
This isn't why I went into it, right? I didn't go in to discover the political stuff, the social stuff. I wanted to know how to help the people I love. And when I came back from this long journey and I'd learned all this, I looked at the addicts in my life, and if, you know, if you're really candid, it's, it's hard loving an addict. And there's going to be lots of people who know in this room, you're angry a lot of the time. And、um, I think one of the reasons why this debate is so charged is because it runs through the heart of each of us, right? Everyone has a bit of them that looks at an addict and thinks, "I wish someone would just stop you." And the kind of script we're told for how to deal with the addicts in our lives is typified by, I think, by the reality show Intervention. If you guys haven't seen it, I think everything in our lives is typified by reality TV. But that's another, that's another TED talk.、Um, uh, if you've never seen the show Intervention, it's a pretty simple premise: you get an addict, all the people in their life, gather them together, and say, "If you don't shape up, confront them with what they're doing, and they say, 'If you don't shape up, we're going to cut you off.'" Right? So what they do is they take the connection to the addict. And they threaten it. They make it contingent on the addict behaving the way they want.、Um, and I began to think. I began to see why that approach doesn't work. And I began to think that almost that's like the importing of the logic of the drug war into our private lives. And what I try to do now, and I can't tell you I do it consistently, and I can't tell you it's easy, is to say to the addicts in my life that I want to deepen the connection with them. To say to them, I love you. Whether you're using or you're not, I love you, whatever state you're in, and if you need me, I'll come and sit with you, because I love you and I don't want you to be alone or to feel alone. And I think the core of that message, you're not alone, we love you, has to be at every level of how we respond to addicts, socially, politically, and individually. For a hundred years now, we've been singing war songs about addicts. I think all along we should have been singing love songs to them, because the opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is connection. Thank you.